Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's gonna be a quick video. We're gonna dive into FODMAPs and how I use them in my clinical practice to address SIBO and bacterial imbalances. All right, let's dig in. So first off, FODMAPs. What are FODMAPs? FODMAPs are fermentable, oligo, disaccharide, mono, and polyols. So these are specific fermentable carbohydrates that are in certain vegetables. You kind of have your, your, your low, your moderate, and your high list. And again, if we, we'll link up here kind of our, our FODMAP article that brings up all of those different foods. So click on that link to get access to more of that information. But your kind of your low FODMAP foods are gonna be things like um, raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, typically your green vegetables for the most part outside of um, broccoli and asparagus and Brussels sprouts. And then you're going to have your moderate FODMAP foods, which are going to be sweet potatoes, avocados, and then your higher FODMAP foods, which may be broccoli, which may be onions and garlic, for instance. So some healthy foods are actually moderate and high in these fermentable oligodisaccharide, mono, and polyol carbohydrates, FODMAPs for short. Now, again, think of gut bacterial imbalance, right? Think of gut bacterial imbalance as like shark infested water. Right? If we throw chum, that kind of like ground up fish gut stuff, it's all red. If we put it in the water, right? We put chum in the water. Well, if there's no sharks there, guess what? It's not gonna be rocket science, but we're not gonna have sharks coming to the surface. Like let's say I go this weekend and put it in Lake Austin, right? We're not gonna have any sharks coming by, at least I hope. Um, so in general, think of FODMAPs as like chumming the shark infested waters of the dysbiotic bacteria in your gut. We don't have a lot of sharks or bad bacteria for short, okay? then we may not have a feeding frenzy, so to speak. So the whole goal is that FODMAPs may create a feeding frenzy. And what that would look like in your gut is bloating, gas, digestive issues. It could be an increase in diarrhea or constipation. Typically a lot of bloat though, right? A lot of bloat, a lot of burping, maybe some reflux. So if we don't have sharks in the water, if we don't have bad bacteria, we don't have bad bacteria, then the FODMAPs may not act like chum in the water, right? Because no sharks, the chum's kind of just useless. So the whole goal is we want to restrict the FODMAPs at first. We want to starve the bacteria at first because think of the chum is what the sharks live on, right? And if we don't chum the waters, then we can kill a lot of those sharks. Now I get it in this analogy, sharks can go hunt other things under the water, right? But imagine we got some helpless sharks and they have to be fed on us. Well, if we restrict some of these FODMAPs, we can starve out some of these sharks or bad bacteria in this analogy. So we can do a lot of killing without even just using antimicrobial herbs. So we can do a lot of the killing with the FODMAPs and then after a period of time, we can come in there and we can just try to lure them back out by throwing some more chum in the water, bring them to the surface and then essentially we can utilize some of the antimicrobial herbal medicines. We may use things like a trantal or silver or ginger, berberines. In my line, we will use GI Clear 1, which is a combination of Java Brucier, Hydratus Coptis, Demona Dill, Yarrow, Wild Indigo, uh, Clove, um, uh, Silver, um, GI Clear 5 is a pure uh, oil of oregano, very potent oil of oregano compound. Uh, GI Clear 6, we'll use olive leaf, Tinea spora, Artemisia, See here, yeah, olive leaf as well, of course. And so think of the herbs that I just mentioned, right? Think of them as like harpoons, right? So we may fire a harpoon gun at these guys here, and we may come and knock this harpoon gun, and we may start to hit the sharks. And this is like all of the antibacterials, the antibacterial medicine, herbals. Antibacterial herbs. This is kind of like my little harpoon gun here. All right, so hope that makes sense. So the whole idea, what we're doing here is we're starving the, the, starving the sharks, the bad bacteria with the FODMAPs. We're coming in, then we're using the antibacterial herbs and we're trying to kill them later. So we starve them, then lure them back out and then kill them. Now again, during this whole process, we wanna make sure we're supporting digestion. Food can be a stressor. If we can't break down healthy proteins, fats and carbs, that can be a stressor. Any healthy food that you go to go grab at Whole Foods or the farmer's market, if, you, if it's designed to be in the fridge and you let it sit on the counter too long, it's in a rot. It's in a putrefy, it's in a ferment, it's in a rancidify. Okay, so we really wanna make sure we're supporting HCL enzymes, bile salt, 
uh, secretion so we can break down those foods properly. Number two, we want to make sure there's no other infections because sometimes we may have an issue where FODMAPs may help, but meaning FODMAPs cutting those out make the symptoms better, but it may not be fixing the issue because we may not be dealing with just a pure bacterial overgrowth issue so that it's not just a bacterial overgrowth, right? Which is bacteria, bad stuff from the colon migrating back up to the small intestine that may actually be an infection issue. H. pylori, maybe even a fungal overgrowth, maybe a parasite infection like crypto, giardia, entamoeba histolytica, endolimix nana, blasto, a whole number of these infections. So it could actually be a deeper infection. So we wanna make sure that we get to the root cause. So this may not be enough, we may have to dig in deeper. So if you have chronic issues, feel free and try some of the things that I'm mentioning. It's good foundational info, it's the low hanging fruit that I mentioned, but if you're having deeper issues, click down below, schedule a consult with myself and my colleagues and we can dive in deeper and figure out what the root issue is. Also, it's good to work on the hormonal stuff ahead of time because that really helps provide a good anti-inflammatory environment. So click on the bell. YouTube's not giving all the people on my list here notifications when I have great new content. Click on the bell so you get notified. Click subscribe and please share, share, share. I want this information to get out there so I can help millions of people take control of their health. Thanks a lot. It's Dr. Jay here signing off. You all have a great weekend. Take care. Bye.